Uh, so my name is Adrian Pfeiffer. I am from Germany. I'm 20 years old. And this is my last semester here at Strasbourg, sadly. And my question for you was, how real does sensory have to be? Because I, I often feel a little bit frustrated when I can't quite get maybe the cup or, uh -huh. or a certain sensation. Uh -huh. But um, does it have to be like actually touching a cup or is having the essence of it or trying to get it, is that enough? I think you might know the answer to this. It's sort of embedded in there, right? Getting the result, especially in your exercise work, in your exercise work, the effort is what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't mean that in a, in a condescending way, like, oh, that Adrian, he's really doing poorly, but he's giving good effort, right? <laughs> no, I mean that really like putting the effort to direct your concentration onto something, mm -hmm. to direct your will into believing something with your body. That's the habit we're trying to build. We're not building the habit of drinking coffee and tasting coffee. Right? Or drinking, you know, drinking air and making it taste like coffee. Mm -hmm. It's an irrelevant habit. That is not what we're building. We're building the ability to wrangle your will. Right? To focus your concentration to believe things. So putting the effort consistently on that and in a way learning how, how to refocus when you get distracted. And you go, oh, this isn't working. What's going on? You start looking around. And then having to come back to that activity again that's still waiting for you, that stupid cup or whatever you're creating is still there. You're like, God, it's only been 10 minutes, right? That's the skill we're building, mm -hmm. right? Of returning back to where you've put your concentration to kind of putting yourself back on the rails. Uh, so in training, I'd say it doesn't matter how much response you get at all, right? Mm -hmm. It's simply the act of doing it, of, of continuing to direct your will and having your will obey you. So you said in training, it the the act of trying to get there yeah. is most important. Right. What if um what if I'm if I have to if I have to do it for a job if I have to create heat or yeah exactly cold. right right. What do you think? Does it matter? I I don't know. Damn right it matters. Like uh, you yeah. have to deliver. Right. So so if you're practicing, what sports do you like? Um, tennis, horseback tennis. riding. Great. I don't know anything about horseback riding other than the horses are big. Um, <laughs> so, so tennis, right? You can have a great swing. In practice, we want to see a great smooth swing. Good footwork, mm -hmm. right? We're not always so worried with it, about exactly where the ball goes. Was that a winner or not a winner? We're looking at like your technique, right? Now, when you play a match, we're hoping that your technique translates into winning tennis. Mm -hmm. Translates into you hitting shots that, that are lower than that, that have the right spin on them, the right placement, that stay in, on the court, right? That you need to achieve those things. So you do need to deliver when it's time to work. Right? Now, the, the funny thing about talent is when you say deliver is exactly when it goes hmm. and it kind of runs away on you. Right? So part of learning the technique is learning how do I create a space where I can be creative? Create a space where reliably my talent keeps showing up. So here is where the similarity to the exercise really comes in, right? Our equation, our math is relaxed body plus a focused mind equals inspiration. Right? Hmm. You relax your body, you focus your mind, and your talent starts to show up. Right? Even in, in, in the scene that I just saw you do, in Dumbwaiter, where there, was, there were moments where nothing was going on. They were talking about tea. There's nothing important about the tea. It's not a momentous moment in the scene, but I won't forget it, right? Because you were relaxed, you were focused, and even focused on the tea. And then on this guy who was asking about the tea and then you eating the cookie, mm. right? Like, it wasn't about creating some big momentous thing. It was about being really, really present. And then, by the way, we also got a laugh in a, right? Which, in that scene, it sh there should be humor in it. People miss it all the time in Pinterest. They can't find the humor, right? It seems so dry and English, right? But, yeah. uh, so part of it is you create that space, good things start to happen. Regardless of what you're working on or how strong the sensory was at that moment, that's like a baseline habit of being really present, 
really focused. And you had that, right? Now there are moments, there are other moments that are gonna require more of you. So like when he, at the end of the scene when he's gonna shoot you, mm -hmm. that maybe requires a little bit more from you. You might need like that intensity to rise and maybe having some guy that you know well hold a, a plastic gun pointing it at you on a stage maybe is not that threatening to you. Yeah. Right? So so that that's not gonna do it just by being present to it. In fact, by being really present, you're gonna say, well, I know that gun's not loaded. <laughs> you know? Uh, in fact, there was a scene somebody did recently um, in C Night, and they had this really amazing fake gun, heavy gun. I don't know if you remember this. Um, I feel like it was a mammoth scene, and they took it out and they put it on the table. And it clunked on the table. Boom. And the whole audience went, oh, gee. Like, and he was a, it was a military guy. So then you start thinking, maybe he has a real gun like that. Uh, was, and you could just, like you could see, feel, hear the weight of it. And it was really scary, actually. Like for, for a few minutes in there, even though he's a good guy, it was not like he's, we weren't worried, he's a crazy guy. You're thinking, did he? And the whole tenor of that scene changed. So sometimes the reality of the situation can help you just react. Right? If there's actual pushing and shoving in the scene, someone good fight choreography or a guy who can actually push and shove a little bit and you know how to absorb the blow, that physical contact will help you. Just be present, let it happen. And sometimes not enough. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, art is composed. It's not just reality. Even reality TV is not just reality. It's reality composed under certain conditions, heightened, right? So as an actor, sometimes you need to heighten. That means the sensory needs to function for you. Does it need to be the same as reality? Well, we're always gonna strive for that. We're gonna strive for that level of immersion. But it's almost, I don't know what the law is, but it's that idea that like, if you keep getting half, half the distance closer, half the distance closer, you'll never actually touch. Yeah. Right? It's sort of like that. We'll keep aspiring to actual reality. It'll never touch. It's always imaginary reality. How much you need depends on you and the scene. How much intensity do you require to to really embody the energy of that moment. And for some people, you just need a sp well, speck of dust. You know, a couple of grains of sand is enough. And other times, you need a hammer pounding away on your chest. Like, what do you require? Whatever you require, that's how, that's how true it needs to be for you, All right? The great thing is, when you're performing, you get to choose. So don't pick things to work on that you can't do. Do you get that? Mm -hmm. Like yes, I think you, yes, you might be you might be a little it. susceptible to this, probably. Yeah. Right, like being an yeah. artsy actor, and you are you're a little artistic, right? And have a sense of being an artist, right? That you go, like, oh, I want to broaden myself. Well, great, that's how you train. You broaden, broaden, broaden. When it's time to deliver, what you use better work. Don't sell me a product that's on beta version. And I never really tried this program. I don't know if it's going to function. But here, let, let's see if it runs your pacemaker. You know what I mean? Like you would never do that. You'd have tested it out, rehearsed with it, tried it, you go, this is gonna work for me. This consistently works for me. So now I can use it professionally. If it doesn't, if it's hit or miss, then it's still a work in progress. It's still a prototype that you keep in the garage, you practice with it, you can read with your friends, read a play, try it out again, rehearse with it, try it out again. But if it's not working in rehearsal, or if it's not working with you at home reading alone, like don't expect it to suddenly turn on mm. just because you're on, a, you're on set. Right? Find things that you can actually do that function for you and then use those things. Okay. All right? Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you very much. You're welcome.